you've had five years here doing this. What was your major failure? What was something that you, like a failure that you really learned something from that made it like, it was like a, oh my God, that sucked. And I just learned so very much from that. And it was so important. And you don't have to get into the details, but like, I'd love to hear like the general, this is kind of what happened. And this was the major lesson from it. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm learning here. So teach. Yeah. I'm trying to think of something like catastrophic. Um, I should probably have this on the tip of my tongue. I get it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, look, there's a few, there's maybe a few different categories of failures. I mean, there's, there's like personal failures, you know, where every time I've ever had to let somebody go, I felt, I feel like a huge failure, right? At the end of the okay. day, uh, you know, it's my team. I hire them and, my decision to bring them on and if they don't work out there's nobody to blame but me mm -hmm. um and that's that's a stab in the heart definitely every time and it's not something that gets easier with time um and it's it's something that um i don't want to say you have to learn to deal with because i don't know if you can because you've just you know sent somebody home and they don't know where the next paycheck is coming from that's your fault so right. you know not not everything is glamorous not everything is vp I mean you, you know big office whatever like there's real world implications to it. Um, and you're, you're affecting real people. Right. Um, so I, I take every one of those as a big failure, no question. Um, and then there's certainly failures with customers that I've had. I mean, a particular one that comes to mind and it's a failure that I still don't know how, what I would have done differently. That's the truth. Yeah. But there was a Fair customer enough. of ours uh, who spent, they spent half a million dollars one year, which uh, is a decent amount. It's not, it's not our biggest customer, but it's a good amount. Okay. And um, they were, you know, they were such a great customer. We built such great relationships. I found myself in their office in San Francisco, in San Jose, like six or seven times that year. It got to the point where like people recognized me in the hallways of this building <laughs> saying hi. And I started introducing people who worked at that company who didn't know each other. And, you know, me and this, this guy, we were working on it together. And the, the end result was that the following year they spent $0. Um, they went from half a million dollars to $0. And wow. I don't know exactly what I've done differently. There are some obvious things that come out. First is, I think I got too caught up in how well it was going that I didn't spend any time thinking about what could go wrong. Right? Okay. It, it's you know, it's it, it was very exciting and very fun, and you know, everybody was congratulating us at work. You know, so you know, <laughs> high fives in the hallways. But uh, we never looked at the risk factors. Right? There's uh, what do they call them? Uh, the strategy framework. Well, in our framework, it was it was risk versus. I mean, it was it was command versus risk. You were saying I was so in command. I felt like I was so in command of the situation that chance wasn't really. Like, I didn't see how chance was playing yeah. a role here, right? Yeah. You so didn't what, see. What the, yeah, what what are the popular frameworks we used it for a while? It's, it's called SWAT. Sure. Um, which is strengths, weaknesses, Weakness. uh, opportunities, and threats. Mm -hmm. So we were definitely big on you know strengths. We were definitely big on opportunities. Um, I think we were very weak on on. Uh, weaknesses and non-existent on threats. Okay. What happened is one of our competitors moved in and took over. Um, and uh, that, that was a big loss for me. And they, they, to this day, we have not recovered them. We're Do you know, were you aware? I'm curious, did you have any foreknowledge that this customer, that this uh, competitor was, was even in the game at the time? Yeah, I did. Hmm. I did, and I was so confident so confident in what we were doing and so confident in the relationships we'd built and you know we'd met the sea level people and you know we'd done all sorts of interviews and blah 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 and i think we were it, it was almost uh, quite hubris if i can if i if i can exaggerate that's not exaggeration uh, i'm sorry we, we, we were sure we were sure yeah. and uh we were dead wrong so that was i'm not gonna you know name the specific customer but that was definitely a big a big loss for me something i i took a lot of lessons from for um, how to engage not just with our largest customers, but also how do I how do we start recognizing signs of, uh, of of deterioration? Right, where chance is starting to play its like really starting to play its role, and you're saying, wait a second, these chances are now impactful on our ability to hit these objectives and main, maintain our capacity to do that over time. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, and and with that, I would say that the, the top way to mitigate that is is what we spoke about earlier, or maybe maybe the third key word. What I mentioned is humanity. What I mentioned is proactivity. Mm. The last sort of uh, hierarchy is value. Mm. Right. At the end of the day, they can love me as much as they want. I could love them as much as I want. You know, they could be dying to work with me. They cannot justify that investment in me. They cannot show very clearly the value that I have presented to them. 
there's no chance. And I think that's right. really where we fell short is we invested very heavily in the relationship, invested very heavily in, um, I don't know, good vibes. <laughs> and did not invest heavily enough in value that C level was going to care about. So, and if we were to translate that, like, yeah. uh, if I were to translate that into stuff we kind of learned in class, what you're saying is you were thinking really on the tactical level, the maneuvers that you were doing and how you were going to control the situation as it was, and you weren't seeing how the the operative and strategic levels were impact being impacted by change in the environment around you. Right. And what that meant for you was you were no longer able to provide for your other, for the person who was the receiver of your, your ideas or your, your thing, what they needed to be able to continue the relationship. Is that an accurate way of saying it? Is that a, would you say a, a, that? Absolutely. We, we were, we were stuck here and we needed to be looking up here. Be looking up here, right? We, we went, we went bottom up, um, but we didn't go up enough, if you will. Right. Um, uh, yeah, we, we got, uh, we got stuck. Um, it's not a mistake we've repeated since I can say happily, uh, we've done a much, uh, much better job doing a, a well-rounded approach towards, you know, retaining our customers and things have mm -hmm. improved, but, uh, yeah, absolutely. That was a big loss, big failure. Thank you for joining us in the doctor's den. Don't forget to like share and subscribe. Hope to see you next time.